Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. We're just getting into a series on suffering and trials. Our topic today, expecting suffering and trials. No, I didn't say looking for suffering <laughs> and trials. That's unhealthy. But expecting in this broken world, Jesus said even his followers, you'll go through trials and tribulations. So expecting, but also finding the way through with Christ by our side. It's a great topic. We're glad you joined us today for Hope Sabbath School. Welcome to the team. Amen. Good to be together. This is going to be a great series. Yeah, and, and we're going to have time to share testimonies because some people may say, well, I don't think Laurel has any suffering or trials. <laughs> and she's like, no, we all do, right? right. We all yeah. face yeah. challenges. So we're glad you're here in the studio. We're also glad to welcome Sabina, British Columbia, Canada. Sabina, good to see you again. Glad you're part of Hope Sabbath School team today. Rodney joining us from Toronto and Ontario, Canada. Good to see you. And Gladys joining us from Maryland in the United States. Glad you're with us, Gladys. Always glad to have our remotes with us. We're glad you're with us too, because you're part of a global family. We know of uh, Hope Sabbath School members just from using our app in over 200 countries around the world, 180,000 following us on our Facebook page. And we want to hear from you. Write to us, sshope at hopetv.org. Let us know how you're blessed by a study of the Word of God. It really encourages us and our media team and other Hope Sabbath School members around the world because we'll get to read your email as part of an upcoming program. So thank you, Al, for writing to us from New York State in the United States. And, and uh, Al writes and says, Greetings, Hope Sabbath School members. Greetings. I watch Hope Sabbath School each week and I learn a lot by the way you conduct the study. I'm a 76 year young. Now that may be confusing in another language, but it means I'm 76 years old, but I feel young, right? A Vietnam veteran, I firmly believe that Jesus is coming sooner than most people think. What do you say? Uh, amen. Amen. God bless you all. Well, Al, thanks for writing to us from uh, New York State here in the United States. We believe Jesus is coming soon too. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, there'll be some suffering and trials before the glorious appearing, but Christ Jesus is right by our side. Uh -huh. James writes to us from Malawi in the heart of Africa. And James says, I enjoy Hope Sabbath School so much. May the Almighty God continue blessing you and your team. Amen? Amen. Amen. James, just a short note, but we're so happy we could hear from you <laughs> there in the beautiful country of Malawi. Mm -hmm. Here's a note from a donor couple in Florida in the United States of America. And they write, our family would like to thank you for your efforts to share the gospel message. We would also like to do our small part in supporting that work. Please accept a small gift as a token of our appreciation. Our plans are to support in the future as we're able. You may wish to save the money of sending too much correspondence to us. Well, thank you for letting us know that too. We're looking forward to your programming and feel truly blessed. Keep the blessings coming. We especially appreciate the approach in Hope Sabbath School and how it's conducted with all the participation. We're out here in the hinterland feeling like we're included and part of the study. Mm -hmm. Our prayers are with you and your efforts. Well, I just want to say thank you so much. By the way, a donation of $200 to Bless God. Hope Sabbath School. Yeah. Sometimes we send out that communication because if we don't tell you, you don't know, no. <laughs> right? And that's why we read the emails because we want you to see how God is touching lives around the world. Thank you to all of our donors, our impact partners. If you'd like to be a part of that miracle, go to hopetv.org slash hopess. You can just click on the donate button and say, I want to be part of sharing a message of hope with the world. And one last note from the great country of Kenya. Oh. John writes and says, greetings, Hope Sabbath School. Yeah. Got a wave. <laughs> I hope this message finds you well. I'm blessed by the interactive study of the Word of God. You can tell he's a Hope Sabbath School member. <laughs> I weekly watch the study and I teach at my local wow. Sabbath School. Amen. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. That's, that, that's what we want to see thousands of right. you take the outline, download it from our website, 
and start a class in your area. Your discussion brings joy and blessing to my members. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, God bless you, says John in Kenya. Well, I just want to thank you for being part of the miracle. Mm -hmm. Great to be part of Hope Sabbath School, isn't it? We're going to sing our theme song in just a minute from Isaiah 41:10. Fear not, for I am with you. But I want to remind you, we have a special, a beautiful gift for you, first time ever offered on our Hope Sabbath School program, a collection of 12 songs called Songs of Hope. One of them is the theme song for this series, Fear Not, for I am with you. Those 12 scripture songs can bless your life, especially if you're facing suffering and trials. So just go to our website, hopetv.org slash hope, hope Click on the free gift tab in the middle of the screen and you can download those 12 songs to bless your life. And you have our permission to share them with as many people Amen. as you would like. Right Amen. now, let's sing our theme song together. Fear not. I love that song, Fear Not, For I Am With You. And as we look at this study on expecting suffering and trials, it's really encouraging to know the Lord's yeah. with us, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Let's pray before we begin our study. Father in heaven, I thank you for that precious promise recorded in Isaiah 41.10. Fear not, for I am with you. And as we continue this series, Yes, we know suffering and trials will come, but may we find comfort and courage and hope knowing you're with us. Guide us even in our study today, we pray, in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'd like to start with a question. If God is good, why is there so much suffering in the world? Mm. I mean, if God's in charge of everything, why is there so much suffering? How would you answer that question, Travis? Because God is love. Now, that doesn't make a lot of sense to us. I know God is love. I could explain. But you could explain. So explain it, because someone says, Travis, I don't understand that. If God is love, why doesn't he prevent all of the suffering? Well, I was thinking of uh, Matthew 13. There's a parable that talks about these wheat and tares, and it's actually a description of the angels looking down and saying, I thought you planted good seeds. Mm. Why are there bad seeds? And the Bible says an enemy has done this. Well, the, re the reason there is suffering in this world is because God is a God of free will. And he allows people to do what they do um, according to their free will. He doesn't stop them from doing wrong. Mm. So Satan has come and planted bad things. And because God has to leave us up to our own free will, the result is there are going to be some people making some bad decisions. 
I remember someone called me one time and said, we're having some trouble with the harassment in, in our uh, dormitory, actually, but mm. we have a problem. We don't believe that Satan exists. Mm. Mm. So the problem is, if you don't believe there's anyone s sowing the tares or the weeds, mm. how do you explain the suffering? Mm -hmm. Well, let's look and see. And I'm going to ask Enoch, if you begin our study, <clears throat> going to a little book of 1 Peter, right before the end of the Bible, in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Again, Peter's the one who says, holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So that's why we call scripture inspired or God breathed. Remember in our previous study, the psalmist says the Holy Spirit put his words in my mouth. Mm -hmm. Let's see what testimony Peter gives. And, and Travis is right, but he mentioned someone, an enemy mm -hmm. that's in bringing suffering on the planet. How does your Bible read in 1 Peter 5 and verse 8? Okay, I'm reading from the NIV version, and it reads, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Amen. All right. Amen. Uh, doesn't sound too friendly. What does the de w yeah. verb devour mean? Consume. 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 Kill. Yeah, mm -hmm. just kill, destroy. Finished, finished, right? Yeah. He's trying to take you out. Mm -hmm. and, and he's given a name there, that your enemy... The devil. The devil. The devil. The devil. Okay, now there are some other names for him we're going to discover. In fact, Jesus speaks about this enemy in John chapter 8. Nicole, if you could take us there. This is important. Listen carefully. This is important. You're joining us for Hope Sabbath School today. A series on suffering and trials... Well, you could just talk about how to survive them, but why is there so much suffering? Why are there so many trials? We need to understand a great controversy between good and evil, a cosmic conflict. Jesus speaks about the battle in John 8 and verse 44, and not only there, but what does he say there, uh, Nicole? So the New International Version of John 8, 44 says, You belong to your father, the devil and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Mm. Mm. Very direct. Now, it doesn't give us any other names. It still calls him there the devil, Diabolos, which literally means the accuser, yeah. the accuser, okay? But it told us something about him. He's a liar, liar, liar and murderer. a murderer, which ties in, Laura, with what we read about devour, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Murderer. So here's this picture, but let's, let's go on. Sabina, could you take us to the last book of the Bible, to Revelation chapter 12, and read for us verses 7 through 11. We're getting a picture of a battle a battleground, if you will. Mm. Yeah. And it helps us to understand why, if God is good, is there suffering in the world? Thank you for reading. Yes, I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and it says, And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God, our God day and night, has been cast down. And they overcame by him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And the, they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Hold to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. Mm. Well, there's the wrath, the devourer, the murderer, the liar. He's given different names here besides just the devil, mm -hmm. yeah. as Jesus called him in right. John 8. What's he called? The great dragon. The great, great dragon. dragon. All right. What else is he called? Accuser. The, it's, he's called Satan, right? Mm. Yes. It, Sat, actually, Satan is, is uh, 
the opposer. Mm -hmm. you know, okay. The opposer. Uh, so he's accusing us, and who's he opposing? God. God. He's opposing God, right? Mm -hmm. There's this great battle. Now, the good news is he can be overcome. Amen. And, and this is not a, a study just on how to overcome the enemy, but we overcome him by trusting in Jesus and what he's done for us. Amen. And our testimony, what's our testimony? Our testimony is, I've decided to stand under the banner of Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 But there's this battle that's going on and it's very real. I want you to take us, Jason Miller, if you would, back to the ancient prophet Ezekiel, about 6th century B.C., because the Holy Spirit gives a revelation to him. People say, Derek, how can people know about things that are happening in cosmic realm? Hmm. And the answer, surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he reveals it to his servants, the prophets. Let's see what revelation was given to <clears throat> Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 28. If you could read verses 13 through 17 for us. All right. I have the New King James Version here. Ezekiel chapter 28 verses 13 through 17 says, You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, topaz, and diamond, beryl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. So I want you to notice some key words there. What, what key words? Rodney, what key word this revelation about this being that's cast out of heaven. What did you hear there that was really important, Rodney? I heard words like, uh, paraphrasing, beauty, lots of stones covering him, describing him. Um, I also hear the word cover, cover, like a covering cherub. Mm. And that seems to relate to back in ancient times when there was the, um, the mercy seat, there was a the temple, the tabernacle that God asked. There was a mercy seat. There were some covering um, angels there over the mercy seat, uh, intimating that he was one that was very, very near to God in heaven. Mm. So high, he was high, made perfect. A high-ranking angel. Mm -hmm. Key word, though, he was created. Created. Yeah, Thank you, Nicole. Yeah. <laughs> this is not God. Right. Yeah. right. We'll discover, you can look in Isaiah chapter 14, that he wants to be like God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but he's created. Amen. Exactly. Yeah. Now, here's a question. Did God create the devil? Mm. No. Gladys, you're shaking your head. Say, Derek, no. No, he created a perfect being. He created, like you, you, we just read, everything was perfection for him. So God did not create the devil. He created a perfect angel. So, Travis, to come back to that issue of love and free choice, God creates a beautiful angel. As Rodney pointed out, uh, actually, he's in a position of authority. He's right. standing right next to the throne, one of the mm -hmm. anointed cherub that covers. Mm -hmm. But it says iniquity was found in his heart. What, what happened there? So uh, iniquity is, is sin. And the Bible decides sin is lawlessness. And so the, the Bible even says that it's the mystery of iniquity. Somehow, he in and of himself became self-righteous and was really proud of how he looked, and he tried to establish his own government in heaven. Mm -hmm. And he was cast out. And now, um, here we have a choice. In the context of the cross, we see Satan's government played out in darkness, and Jesus' um, love fully demonstrated at the cross, and we make a choice. Mm -hmm. And that's where this love, this free will comes in because love always requires free will. Mm. God, if he forces us to love him, that's not free will. Right. Mm. And so we get to make a choice in the context of the cross and the demonstration of Satan's government. Mm -hmm. We get to make a knowledgeable choice to choose and follow God. And by the right. way, uh, Revelation tells us he, he took a third of the angels with him. So this mm -hmm. is a major disruption. But Rodney, I, I was just impressed by the Lord. I know you've got a comment. 
but I was impressed that we should read from Isaiah's revelation in Isaiah 14, verses 12 to 14. It's, it's, it's not, it wasn't in our outline, but sometimes the Holy Spirit brings another text because there he's given another name. You talked about him as a high ranking being, but the mystery that Travis talked about, a perfectly created being, an angel, uh, something happened to him. Um, would you read for us and then maybe you want to comment Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 to 14. And uh, let's see again, you say, how did Isaiah the prophet knew, know that it was revealed to him Amen. from God? What, what does it tell us, Rodney? I'm reading from the New King James Version. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Mm. Uh, whew, there's a lot of I wills there, <laughs> right? Um, murderer, liar, um, usurper or attempting to usurp yep. the very place of God. Mm -hmm. uh, now let's come down to planet Earth because we read from Revelation that he's cast to the earth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you think of some Bible characters we know there are many more. He's attacked everyone on the planet. Mm -hmm. But some Bible characters who came under the attack of this ferocious lion, as he called, trying to devour this liar, this murderer. Just some stories. Laurel? Yeah, the first one that, who comes to my mind is Job. And what's interesting is that the book of Job uh, begins with this council where, you, like, the same man who was cast out of heaven was accusing God of like, oh, you're just picking favorites with Job. And so he, God decides to let Job go through these trials. Wow. And that's an interesting one as we look at this series because mm. God is not the source. By the way, Satan says, you touch him. And he says, no, God is not the source of suffering. But in that situation, he allows the suffering to come. But mm -hmm. you can't take his life, right? That tells us, by the way, the character of Satan. He is... Uh, an abuser, mm -hmm. he is a murderer, mm -hmm. he is a pain inflictor. Mm -hmm. yes. You see that in the book of Job. Someone yeah. else who came under attack. Just some short illustrations, Jason. Well, Jesus. I mean, Jesus. In the That's garden, right. in the wilderness, you know, he was, you know, fasting for the 40 days, you know, 40 nights, and he came under attack. You know, Satan came to him as an angel of light, you know, trying to get him to uh, basically exalt him, you know, as he wished he would be, if we read, as we read in uh, as, uh, Isaiah. He comes using deception, deception right? Because yeah. he's a liar. Travis, another one? I have to throw this one in here because it demonstrates God's love. And okay. that is Samson. Because Satan succumbs to temptation mm -hmm. over, or Samson does, mm -hmm. over and over and over and over. God leaves him up to his free will right. and then the consequences of sin. Mm -hmm. But then in Hebrews chapter 11, it describes him uh, uh, as a great man of faith. And I thought to myself, how? And it's because you would have to have great faith to live a life like that and think that God could still redeem you. And at the end of his life, he prays. Yeah, yeah. it's just... He prays and calls exactly. out to God. Gladys, can you think of someone else? We're in the middle. Of, someone might say, me, you know, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. Think of a time you've come under attack. Gladys? Our fir first parents, yep. you know, they came under attack right after, you know, Satan just came and, and wanted to, to take care of them. They succumbed to the temptation, but they were greatly attacked and suffered the consequences of their choice. You're thinking of Genesis 3 and yeah. our first parents, Adam and Eve. Yeah. So yes. remember we started the study, and Laurel, I'd like you to take us back to 1 Peter chapter 5. We started the study by reading about this uh, roaring lion looking for people to devour, right? Mm -hmm. But let's see what Peter says under inspiration in the following verses, verses 9 through 11. 1 Peter 5, verses 9 through 11. All right. I'll be reading from the New American Standard Bible. But resist him, firm in, in your faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. After you have suffered for a little while, 
the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you to be uh, to him be dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so here's the enemy, but you can resist him. Uh, we read they overcame by the blood, resist him. But, but this, how do we resist him? I'm going to ask uh, Jason Miller if you could read from Ephesians 6. And while you're looking, Jason, you wanted to comment. Oh, yeah. And I was just saying this, this uh, last scripture that we was quoting, you know, in First Peter, is not just words that's being spoken. Peter actually experienced an attack as well. You know, Jesus said, I pray for you because the enemy wanted to uh, shift him as weak, you know? Right. So it's just coming from a personal place that Peter is speaking this, of this true attack that Satan does. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. Uh, Paul, Saul, later Paul, he comes under attack all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. He's beaten with rods, shipwrecked, stone, put in prison. Uh, but in terms of the spiritual battle, and that's what we're talking about, expecting suffering and trials because the enemy is abroad, mm -hmm. uh, what, what counsel does the Apostle Paul give in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18? The New King James Version says in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end, with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Beautiful. Amen. So, armor of God, mm -hmm. praying in the Spirit on all occasions mm -hmm. with all kinds of prayers. What's a key lesson? We're talking here about the author of suffering, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fallen angel, takes a third of the angels with him. By the way, that's implied principalities and powers. Right. It's not just one person, is it? Yeah. It's a confederation mm. of evil. Mm. So, Sabina, give me one lesson. We're talking here about expecting trials and suffering. One lesson from this passage. For me, the main lesson that this passage brings up, Pastor Derek, is that God has given us resources to thrive in this warfare that is taking place. So we need to reach out to them, that He's giving to us His righteousness, He's instilling in us faith. He's given us already His word. And it depends on us also to reach out to those weapons that He gave us so that we stand protected. Mm, thank you. Take up, put on. These are active words. Rodney, what, what would you add to that? So what I see here is the accuser coming to us with temptation. Praise God that He has given us the free will but I love verse 10, and, and of course, the rest of it is beautiful. Verse 10 um, coincides with what we heard from Travis, which is, we must be strong with our will in the Lord mm -hmm. and in the power of His might. So, in other words, if we continue to develop that strong relationship with Him, with the power of the will that He has given to us, and with His power, we can overcome our enemy. That's awesome. We're going to go to two final comments. And then I want to tell you that while the devil is a source of suffering and tribulation, we can also bring suffering upon ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to look at next after your comment, Nicole and Jason. Well, just practically when I read this, this passage of Scripture, I always think 
we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And I think it's hard, at least for me, to not think that what Jason does to me is personally against me. Mm -hmm. It's more of what is being, the devil is doing. Uh, and so I, I have to remember that I don't fight against Jason. I'm fighting against the enemy that's trying to keep, I don't. You're using him as an I just use an example. Yes, Jason and I are fine. Really <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, I wrestle against the enemy that is trying sure. to destroy me. Sure. And so it's hard for us sometimes to realize that it's not about the humans Where's around it? us, but it's the Where's enemy it? that's trying to destroy mm -hmm. us. And that is a great point. Remember one time the enemy tries to use Peter to turn Jesus, right. and Jesus, Jesus looked right past Peter and said, yes. get behind me, exactly. Satan. Exactly. Right. Exactly. right? Yep. Peter's not the enemy. Right. He's not acting very accurately at that point, but he's not the enemy. Yeah. Very important. Jason? Yes, building off what Nicole said, our enemy, many times when we're struggling, when we have sufferings and trials, we think it's other people or other forces, but we have to remember other people, yeah, are not the ones that are enemy. There's a greater enemy. There is a greater right. enemy. enemy. And sometimes, and we're going to move on now, if someone could find Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 and 8, sometimes the enemy is me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we, by our choices, right. can be separated from God, and mm -hmm. we may bring suffering upon ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to see, do, Enoch, do you have Galatians yes. chapter 6? You say, Derek, do we have to read these? Like, I feel bad when I realize sometimes I bring it all on myself. Well, we need to recognize that we need the good shepherd, to use the analogy from, from our previous study. We need Jesus by our side, not only to protect us against Satan and the forces of darkness, right but to protect us against ourselves. Mm. Yeah, exactly. uh, mm -hmm. Read for us, Enoch, if you would, Galatians chapter 6, verses 7, and the first part of verse 8. All right. And it reads, Do not be deceived. God is not, cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. So give me an illustration of that, Nicole. So anyone who sows to the flesh will from the flesh receive destruction. An example. So an example would be just um, wanting, wanting to be rich and so doing whatever it takes to get that richness, whether it means killing someone or doing something against what God has told us not to do in order to satisfy our desire for more. Okay. Uh, it could be alcohol, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it could be that, that by choices mm -hmm. I'm destroyed. Does God still... Does God love the alcoholic? What do you think, Laurel? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And such were some of you. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you've been washed, mm -hmm. right? You've been mm -hmm. sanctified. You've been justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. By the way, I didn't make that up. That's in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, right? Amen. Such mm -hmm. were some of you. Mm -hmm. But you may bring trouble upon yourself. Yeah. Sabina, could you read for us, please, from Romans chapter 1? verses 18 through 25, it ties in with something that, Travis, you said earlier about free will. Um, will a loving God allow us to make destructive choices if we insist? Mm. Mm. I don't know. Maybe a young parent would pull the child away, but at some point that child becomes a young adult, right? Yeah. Sabina, read for us, if you would, Romans 1, verses 18 through 25. Okay, I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because what may be known of God is manifesting them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes and clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because I though they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools." and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible men, and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness, 
in the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. So I have a question. Gladys, help me. If God loves us so much, why would he give us up? Why would he give anyone up? I don't want to say us because I've chosen to stay under his banner. Have you? Amen. Yeah. But why would he give anyone up? I don't think that he gives us up. And I want to illustrate this with a personal story. I don't know if you can see my hand. I have a mark in my hand. My mom always used to tell me not to play with the ironing board and because the iron was hot. But I insisted. Did my mom make me get this? Did my mom give me this? No. I learned the lesson for myself because mm. I chose to disobey. So God loves us so much that he will not inflict in our own free will. Mm. Sometimes he will just let us, you know, go our way and then learn the lesson. Hopefully that will bring us back to him. I like what you said, even though the Bible says he gives them up, you said he doesn't give us up. What you mean, I think, is he never stops loving us. Right. Yes. He's, his heart is aching mm -hmm. when he lets us mm -hmm. go yeah. where we insist on going, mm -hmm. even though it will be um, to our hurt. Mm -hmm. Travis? In, in, we, in the verses we just read, it says they exchanged the truth of God for a lie. Right. They made mm -hmm. the exchange. Right. And it says they serve the creature. Uh, rather than the creator. And I believe that creature is Satan. He was the created being. Mm. And they're worshiping him because they believed his life. Sure. Mm. Nicole, I wish we could read all of Proverbs chapter 7, but I'm going to ask you just to read verses, uh, start, start in verse 6. And uh, let, me, let me have you read uh, verses, let's see, Proverbs 6. Read um, 6 through 9, and then I'll have you read a couple of verses toward the end of the chapter. But all this, this is Solomon telling a story, is to illustrate that we can bring suffering upon ourselves. Mm. Yes. Right? Yes. We can choose. Mm -hmm. and, and a loving God will not take away our freedom of choice. Yep. Uh, could you read, uh, starting in Proverbs chapter 7, uh, read verses 6 through 9. Sure. The New International Version says, At the window of my house I looked down through the lattice, I saw among the simple, I noticed among the young men, a youth who had no sense. He was going down the street near, near her corner, walking along in the direction of her house at twilight. As the day was fading, as the dark of night set in. Uh, now, who was this lady or was he surfing on the Internet, Enoch? And mm. just, uh, you know, certain things were, mm. what, what was happening here? Mm. Do you know? Do you know the chapter? Who's who's he seeing, Nicole? He's seeing someone who's not of his, not his his wife. It's not his wife. Correct. Uh, he, he, she's actually described as a she's prostitute, a prostitute right? Yeah. Uh, but he's just kind of hanging out in the night. You say, well, he's not planning to do anything. He's just kind of checking things out. That's yeah. a problem. <laughs> but that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Now we're not going to read the whole story. You can read it. Trust me. He didn't need any help. He did it all by himself. <laughs> but would you go down and read verses 21 to 23 of the same Proverbs, chapter 7, verses 21 to 23. Let's see what happens. And the New International Version says, With persuasive words she led him astray. She seduced him with her smooth talk. All at once he followed her like an ox going to the slaughter, hmm. like a deer stepping into a noose till an arrow pierces his liver like a bird darting into a snare, little knowing it will cost him his life. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, <laughs> that, that's a strong story, mm -hmm. but it illustrates, yes, we've got the author of suffering, liar, murderer, attempting to usurp the throne of God, Satan and his demons who fell with him. But we can also make choices and bring suffering upon ourselves, right? Mm, yeah. Sabina, you want to respond to that? And then I'd like to give the group an opportunity to share a time when you brought suffering and trials on yourself. You say, ouch, that's kind of painful to admit. But someone's watching Hope Sabbath School today saying, I didn't need anyone to lead me astray. I, I just made a foolish choice. Sabina? 
And Pastor Derek, one thing that I find important also to share is that not only we bring suffering upon our own selves when we make those bad decisions, when we are egotistical and self-seeking only, but we are also unfortunately bringing um, bad upon other people. Not only those in that case that we just read here, I think we see that there is mutual bad being done both to that lady and to the gentleman, mm -hmm. but also potentially to their spouses. Mm -hmm. You know, if they have spouses, that's one of them, we know for sure, because uh, there is a mention in the rest of the text that they are not single, right? Even if they were, it looks like they're in, not in the right place. They are not married. Right. Uh, but on top of that, we need to remember that every bad decision that we make will not only affect ourselves, but also affect others around us. And we should be caring about the suffering that we inflict upon others and, mm. you know, act on mercy. So would you agree, at least at this point, we know who the author of suffering is. It's yeah. not God. Mm -hmm. But would you agree we could also bring suffering on ourselves mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. poor choices? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So does anybody have a testimony, Travis, of a time that you brought suffering upon yourself by a poor choice? Boy, I have a lot of testimonies. <laughs> uh, By the way, we don't want to highlight sin, but... No, and you know, Derek, you know, I went down some of these same paths, you know, that this young man did. I'm not going to get into detail because, you know, that's between God and I. But you were also a young man and had some poor examples around you. Sure, and I, and I was just thinking as we were just reading here, that doesn't mean this man is lost, because I think of the very man who wrote the book of Proverbs knew a lot about this because he himself was enticed by women, mm. lots of them. Mm. And um, and Samson is another good illustration, mm -hmm. but we can't continue that way. Right. right. We can't continue that way. And, and that's what I guess I learned through my trials is that it brought pain on my family, uh, divorce, uh, my children, uh, friends. I mean, it, it just was, it wreaked havoc all around the, my community. And uh, fortunately, you know, through a relationship with Jesus, step by step, step by step, you come out of that. And, and that's what God wishes for anybody who's caught in sin, even though they've made bad choices. We want to move on. Thank you for that testimony. We want to move on mm. to the fact that sometimes, mm. don't always say, well, God brought this upon me, but sometimes God may allow a trial to come yeah. in order to work a greater good. Sometimes he may, to use the analogy from our previous study, he may lead us through a dark valley yeah. mm -hmm. in order to teach us to trust him more. Mm -hmm. Can you think of some stories in the Bible? Mm. Maybe, uh, Rodney, you could start. Let's, we, we, we'll look at many, just short illustrations, where it seems very clear that God led one of his sons or daughters through a trial in order to accomplish a greater good. Mm. What, what would you share, Rodney? There are many examples of such, but the one that stands out in my mind is Joseph. Mm. Joseph was sold by his brothers, very unfortunate scenario to Egypt. Uh, he still trusted God, but uh, God, uh, he, allowed him to be put in prison again, false in accusations. But ultimately, God um, uh, placed him in a position, um, one of the highest positions in, in, in Egypt, mm. where he ultimately, through, through God's help, was able to save Egypt, the surrounding nations, and also his, his family uh, from a famine. So there is where you kind of see God taking Joseph through this, this very challenging time in his life for a greater good. All right. You know, can you think of another Bible character where God led that person? This was not some foolish act by a person just carelessly like the, the man in Proverbs 7. And it wasn't like Job attacking the children. I mean, Satan attacking <laughs> the children of Job. But, but God was leading through a trial to accomplish a greater good. Yeah, definitely. Um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, um, they wouldn't bow down to the king. And so uh, they got thrown into the fiery furnace. But we see mm -hmm. that God um, came in there and, and, and delivered them. So that's in Daniel chapter 3. Could it be that before they were even taken as prisoners of war, mm. they were teenagers, mm -hmm. and they went through a three-year university training, remember all of that, <laughs> came out top of their class, class because yeah. they determined not to 
dishonor God in their bodies. Right. Remember that? Yeah, exactly. mm -hmm. Right? Could it be that even when they were being taken as prisoners of war, that God knew <laughs> this trial on the plain of Dura? Right. Yeah. And that they would they would say, we're not going to bow down to that golden idol. Right? right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, great illustration. Anybody else? Another story. Jason? It comes to mind Paul and Silas. You know, when they were in Philippi, they got arrested, you know, and they were in jail. And of course, you know, um, it was an earthquake that took place and they basically, you know, the jail was uh, put to a point where all the people were basically could be free. You know, the chains fell off and everything and they were about to leave, but they stayed for a greater purpose because, of course, we understand the jailer and his family got saved. They got baptized that <laughs> Acts night. Acts chapter 16. Amen. Yeah. In Philippi. Mm -hmm. Beautiful story. Beautiful. So uh, <laughs> I doubt if Paul and Silas, while they were being beaten mm -hmm. with rods, we're going, hallelujah. <laughs> this was suffering. Yeah, it was. Which God permitted mm -hmm. to save a jailer and his family. Maybe some of the other prisoners too. Yeah, yeah. Could have become founding members of the church, church. in Philippi, Amen. right? Amen. Mm -hmm. Nicole, can you think of another story that jumps out at you? Sure. I think of Daniel in the lion's den. Um, he refused to allow the schemings of the of the wise men in the in the in the in the in, the, in Babylon to prevent him from serving his God. And so just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in his younger formative years, he learned to have faith in God no matter what else is going on around you. And he bowed down, he prayed, they put him in the lion's den, and he was rescued by God. Mm -hmm. But that also saved those who were watching that, that transaction, not transaction, but interaction with him and the lions. Right, Amen. right. So it was for you, a greater good. You know, you, you brought one illustration. Gladys, I see your hand. I'll come to you next. But you brought a good illustration. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Enoch mentioned, and Daniel, they, they were part of a, a, a small Bible study group, right? <laughs> <laughs> they were part of a prayer group. Yeah, yeah. They encouraged each other. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, Daniel wasn't on the plain of Dura, and they weren't in the lion's den. Yeah, right. Right. But they had encouraged each other, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And God permitted those things to happen. Mm -hmm. It wasn't their foolishness, mm -hmm. like the man in Proverbs 7, right? Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't like Satan killing Job's children. Mm -hmm. But God says, I'm going to work good. Right. Maybe the enemy thinks he's going to do some damage, but I'm going to work some good. Yeah. Uh, Gladys and then Sabina. Yeah, I think of Elijah. Uh, Mount Carmel, he did an amazing work for God, and then he had to run for his life. Mm. You know, so sometimes we feel like 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 that. That when we are doing, sometimes I don't know where we learn that when we are walking in God's step, nothing bad is going to happen. And and the Bible tells us that that is not true. That mm. just because we're walking with God. We still live in a sinful world sure. and the devil will have access to us mm. and we'll sometimes will face trials that are beyond our control. Absolutely, Gladys. I would modify your word just a little, if I may. He didn't have to run for his life, but the death threat did come from Jezebel. Right. Mm. So he could have stood and said, the God who protected me against 400 armed uh, prophets on the mountain will protect me against you, wicked queen. <laughs> but, but he was human. And he ran, and, and God was with him even then. Yeah, isn't it encouraging yeah. that God is with us? Uh, sometimes he permits the trial. Sabina? Pastor Derek, also just to note that all of those situations that they went through, it was not God who was directly, uh, you know, inflicting suffering on them. Right. You know, had King Nebuchadnezzar, responded to God's call to him, he would have been nicer to Daniel and to his friends. Right. And this applies to any of those situations. So you're also just remembering that God, he, he worked through the freedom of will of all those agents that we see acting in the universe. And again, it's not him himself who is inflicting that pain, but he's able to work around them for our good, as we are seeing through those texts. He may be able to you know, provide for them the sufficient support that they will need to overcome those situations. But again, they have been inflicted by people who are disobeying God or who are, uh, you know, dishonoring God's uh, true will. Mm. Mm. So here's another challenge, and that is God may permit suffering and we ask him to take it away and he mm. doesn't. Mm. Mm. What do we do then, Jason? If you could read for us from 2 Corinthians 12, verses 7 through 10, the Apostle Paul had some kind of thorn in his flesh. 
Does anybody know what that thorn was? Blindness. The answer is, it's Which not in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Some people say it may have been his eyesight. He never really recovered fully from that blinding light on the Damascus Road. We don't know, though later he speaks about writing in big letters with mm. his own hand. We don't know, but he does talk about a suffering that he's experiencing. And uh, what, what does he learn through that, Jason? Second uh, Corinthians 12, verses 7 through 10. The New King James puts it this way in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 10. And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Mm. I think that's a hyperbole. <laughs> I don't think he really took pleasure in suffering. But he said, I can see beyond that. Mm. Yes. What can I see beyond that? What do I see? Mm. Well, there's one other promise, and I'm going to ask Laurel if you'd read it from Romans 8 and verse 28, because this is the same Paul who said, Lord, could you take away this suffering from me? But he also wrote to the Christians in Rome in Romans 8 and verse 28. Laura, what did he say? All right. Mm. I'll be reading from the New American Standard Bible. Mm -hmm. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. So he says God can work good even out of a bad situation. Yes. Yes. So back to what Jason read earlier, what, what potential trap would the enemy have wanted to set for the Apostle Paul? What were the opening words? Unless I be what? Exalted. Exalted, Exalted. above measure, mm -hmm. right? The Lord might say, well, Paul, I love you so much. I want you to stay dependent on me. Yeah, I'm, right. gonna, I'm going to allow you to continue with this suffering, but let me tell you my grace is sufficient for you. Right. But, but I was thinking while we were sharing, let's say a person's in a marriage and it's not working well. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not unfaithful, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not the Garden of Eden. It's not happy, <laughs> happy, happy. Yeah, right. Uh, and you say, Lord, could, you, could, could things improve? And, and they don't. Right. Jason, how, you, how do you deal with that? Well, definitely your source would be Christ, you know, and allowing him to love through you, you know, and basically uh, developing your character, you know, to be more like him, to be able to, even though the love is not reciprocal, you know, from the particular uh, person in the marriage, but you can still show that love, you know, of Christ. And of course, it'll work on your heart and your measure and your development and being more like him. And maybe, just maybe, that person may be won over. That doesn't sound easy, Jason. No, no, not at all. We're not talking about an abusive spouse or, or a, spouse, a spouse being unfaithful, but a less than ideal situation. You're saying, well, that was Paul, but God said, my grace is sufficient, sufficient for yeah. you. My strength made perfect in weakness. Gladys? Well, uh, Elder Derek, um, you know, when God feels like a miracle in your life, I know I have shared with you guys how um, the Lord cured me of a tumor that I had and I had a surgery. Mm -hmm. But I had my checkup a couple of weeks ago and it seems the tumor is returning. Mm -hmm. So how, how can you feel that, you know, that it's like a thorn in the flesh, just, just coming back. All the memories uh, of what I went through it's just overpowering sometimes. Mm -hmm. But just like we read in Paul's uh, letter, he's saying, you know, that the, the power of God is mm -hmm. enough. My grace is sufficient. And wow. that relationship is what carries you when you, you're facing a trial that is, it seems unbearable for mm -hmm. you, even if it's for a second time. We're going to pray for you in just a moment, uh, Gladys, Jason Miller, I'd like you to read 1 Peter 4, 
This is the last text we'll have time for in our study. Verses 12 through 19. We shouldn't be surprised on this broken planet Oof. that we'll have suffering and trials. Uh, but there's some, uh, there's some counsel here that may be helpful for us. How does that read, Jason? New King James Version, 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 19. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yes, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. Mm. Mm. You can follow Jesus with a whole heart and you may still be led through suffering. Yeah. Yeah. Some of it's brought by the enemy and his demonic forces. Hopefully none of it by your poor choices. Sometimes God may allow things to teach us to depend upon him more, but we live in a broken planet and we just heard today that our dear team member Gladys, mm. uh, that this tumor that she dealt with some years ago, she's just found out it's returning. So what should we do? You say, Pastor Derek, we should pray that Gladys would stay as close to Jesus as ever, that, that God would be glorified on this journey, mm. that his grace will be sufficient for her. Mm. Mm. And maybe you're watching today too and saying, Pastor Derek, I'm dealing with a great trial right now too. Is there hope for me? Mm. And the answer is, mm -hmm. you're on planet Earth, so trials will come, mm -hmm. but we have a Savior. Yes right by our side. Yes. He'll walk with us through the dark valley. Yes. He'll be with us in the midst of the fire. Yeah. And it will not consume you right. yeah. because the Lord is by your side. Mm. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we find even here a real live illustration with our dear team member Gladys mm. with the news of the return of her tumor in her brain. Lord, I just want to thank you that while we may expect suffering and trials on this broken planet, that you are not the author of suffering and that you have promised, I will never leave you or forsake you. You will go with us through the dark valley and we have a glorious eternal destiny with you. May your peace, your comfort and your strength not only bless Gladys, but each one in the midst of suffering and trials even today. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Friends, thank you for joining us for Hope Sabbath School. We're on a planet that's suffering, but we are not alone and we are not without hope. Jesus is by our side and He is our blessed hope. Trust Him today as your Savior, your soon coming King, and go out and share that good news with those around you.